You're welcome back. Uh, there's still the run-up. Uh, recall that the tribunal <coughs> ruling on Friday had nullified the election of People's Democratic Party, PDP's Ademola Adeleke, amid overvoting and additional votes for Adeboyega Oyetola of the APC, putting Oyetola ahead of Adeleke. With acquisitions and discrepancies in the 2022 Oshun state governorship election, how can the judiciary contribute to the free, fair and credible election uh, in this February and March, because these are the two major elections, and that's what we are discussing here. Remember that before now, we had talked about the fact that the UN chieftain had advised the judiciary to be very up and doing and be transparent enough so that uh, these cases will be seen to be given the right judgments. Well, Justice C. Okwebu, human rights lawyer, vice presidential candidate of NAC. Uh, party in the 2019 presidential election is here. And Barrister Abumere Osara. Barrister Abumere Osara is um, a legal practitioner and notary public. Welcome, gentlemen, to the program. Good morning. It is my pleasure once more. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me start with you. <coughs> Hello. Yeah, let me let me begin let me begin with um, by uh, with uh, Justice of Webu. You were in twenty nineteen a candidate, right? And you saw the sorry. sorry? Hello, Justice. Can you hear me? No, I heard. I'm hearing you. Yes. Okay. I okay. Hear you. All right. You were a candidate in 2019, and there was an election, the outcome of the elections and all that. Um, you, you saw the legal processes that happened in 2019. So let me just begin with you. What kind of things from the 2019 experience do you think the judiciary should never take into 2023 because of this advice and the fact that Nigerians want a free and fair election and after that all the drama that goes into the legal matters that come uh, after the elections what kind of things that you do you think the judiciary must never take from 2019 to 2023 well uh, truly speaking i have to say that uh, <clears throat> there are two there are two major issues uh first of all the issue of total independence of the judiciary. What I mean by that is independence of judiciary in the sense that there should not be any interference, any form of interference by the executive, both at the national level, state level, and the local government level. And that is part of the problem we are having today. In our judiciary. Why? Because I keep on saying this, and I will still maintain my position. Where judges are being appointed by the powers of the state governor or the president, there will be likelihood of bias. Secondly, the issue of having people who are above board Incorruptible judges, remember that the same judges we are talking about are also products of the society. But we must be very, very careful to make sure. I could remember a novel I read when I was in secondary school, The Incorruptible Judge. Mm. I don't forget that. Mm. And throughout my years in practice till today, I've always remembered that novel we read in the school, the incorruptible judge. It takes a lot. It takes courage and boldness to be an incorruptible judge in Nigeria because of the interference of the executive. For me, the judiciary should correct itself in certain mistakes they've made, especially the adjudicators. Because any government or any country in the whole world, 
The executive might make mistakes or might fail. The legislature might make mistakes or might fail. But any country that judiciary has failed, that country is leading to doom. We must be very, very careful. Because remember the saying that the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. Let us not forget that. Uh, to draw a parallel uh, between us and the United States. Uh, in the case of the United States, the president directly appoints Supreme Court justices. Directly, you know. Uh, and actually, for certain reasons, maybe this person is a liberal or this person is on, on this side of the ideological divide, you know, the, the president of the U.S. directly appoints. Uh, as against our system where it's got to be a recommendation of the National Judicial Council without prejudice to the point you made. I just want to draw this parallel. Now, if in the case of the US, for instance, where the president directly appoints justices, um, we can still say to a reasonable degree that there's a, a certain significant level of uh, independence uh, in, in the US. But in our own case, where it's on the, upon the recommendation of the NJC and all that, and we are still having concerns about the incorruptibility and neutrality uh, of our judges. What do you think the, the, the issue is here? Is it the society? Because, like I said, on, in one case, we see the president directly appointing. In another case, we see the president appointing on the basis of the recommendation of the NJC. But yet, we here are more concerned that the perception is that a lot needs to be done you know, on the part of our, our judicial system to guarantee transparency and uh, neutrality and so on and so forth? Is it for me? I look at it and I see it as um, a societal issue. And that was why I said, remember, that even the judges themselves are, the, are also products of the society. You can remember that. Then you, if you look at it holistically, you see, there's something that baffles me in Nigeria. We always make reference to United States, UK, when things are like this. But we don't make reference to them when we, when we are supposed to attract the good things from those countries to put into ourselves. Remember that every country with its own peculiarity you cannot be comparing Nigeria with a place like United States or UK in terms of administration or in terms of governance. Because these are people that are sane. These are people that know what they are doing. These are people that somebody wants to live above board. These are people that somebody wants to make a name. These are people that somebody wants to, you know, the society or the world to know that they are actually doing something good. And not in our own life. We are people, the, the, the major problem we have here today is impunity. And you see, you talked about NJC. NJC, yes, is there. But remember that even if you look at it holistically, if you look at it holistically, NJC somehow is also being influenced by the powers of the executive. That is, the, you see, if you look at it, you know, uh, side by side with Nigerian system, the United system, and even the UK system, you begin to understand that we are doing things differently, entirely differently. Okay, you, we talked about the, 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 the president of uh, uh, United States appointing Supreme Court judges. Can the president of United States pick up a phone and call the Supreme Court judge? that he has an interest in a matter. It cannot happen because everybody is being monitored. Even the phone calls you make is being monitored. It cannot happen. But here, a governor, even a chairman of a local government can pick up a phone and call a judge. And it will become another, another story. All of a sudden, look at some series of judgments we've had in recent times. Look at the case of Imo State, for example. So what are we saying? So what do you think uh, in terms of um, character? I mean, definitely your point is solid. Huh? The, the, everybody in the country is a product of the society. But then um, if you look at the, the judges we've had or the justices we've had, people like Ade Tokumba Demola, Justice Oputa, Fatai Williams, and so on and so forth, that golden generation where many of them even became international jurists, what was happening at that time? And mind you, uh, Barrister uh, Justice, you will also remember that they functioned largely in the military era. In the military era, when there was no, I mean, no rule of law, yeah. no democracy, none of that. But some of them became internationally acclaimed jurists. 
So what have we missed and what can be done, even though the elections are just 25 days away? But are there, are there some things from your perspective that we can still do, you know, to try to begin to go back to that era of, of, of these eminent uh, jurists? Yes, truly speaking, first of all, I look at it from the angle of character. Because today, for example, with our mission was, for example, magistrates and judges are nowadays appointed by, I'm from Imo State. A certain time in Imo State, magistrates in Imo State were appointed by just a, a text message from the CJ in collaboration with the, with, with the governor. Hmm. So, you see, when, when, when they, 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 they have messed up the system, that is just the truth. You talked about the era of Oputa. Oputa JSC, of blessed memory, I used to call him the Longevity of Africa. I met him one-on-one -on -one when he was alive. I learned a lot of things from him. Today, do, can we have an Oputa again in this country? And that era, these are people that lived above board. These are people that wanted to make names. These are people that are not... You know, interested in your, your, your billions and millions of naira. But today, it's all about what are you going to gain. As I speak to you, my brother, most of our adjudicators today try to lobby to be appointed to, be, uh, uh, to, to go to tribunal. Hmm. Is this supposed to be so? It's no longer about making them for yourself and making them for the judiciary. Is about self-induced uh, influence, what you think you can make up. And that's why I talked about character. Remember, I talked about the incorrigible judge. Mm. What are the kind of people we are bringing? Because when you talk about adjudication, it's one of the most sensitive things you can talk about. Judges, the lives of people are in the hands of these judges. They try murder cases, they try manslaughter, and so many other cases. And even the issue of, of tribunal. The whole nation, a whole state, is relying on them. And again, let me also say this. You see, we should not stay away from the truth. There is what is, you can, the, the court can make judgments or can deliver judgments based on public morality, public safety, and security. You don't, bring, you don't make judgments you cannot enforce, first of all. You can make judgments that will be anti people. That will, cross, that will cause a problem in the society. Then are you a problem solver or a problem creator? We must not accept the truth. The time of James Oputa them, Adema Tekumbe them, we are not like this. What has gone wrong in this era? Okay. Before uh, now, before you become a judge or a magistrate, you, you see, people must know your character. Okay, well, um, let's... But all these things let's, have let's gone go to, away. Let's go to Barrister Abu Mary Osara. Um, the fact that the, the United Nations has said, let me not use the word warned, but they have said that 2023, the judges or whoever is in charge of the legal angle to whatever will happen in February and March should be careful and do the right thing. It means that the world is watching us. Obviously, the world always watches us. We are the most populous black nation uh, in, the, in the world. So the world watch, watches us. And whatever happens in Nigeria will trickle down to other African countries and by implication, the entire globe. So a simple question is, this thing that they are advocating, this thing that the United Nations is asking for, is it doable? And if it is doable, what are the things that must be put in place before the elections and immediately after the elections? Go ahead. Yeah, th thank you very much, uh, uh, my good friend. In case you're looking for uh, the name. <laughs> in my view, yeah. the United Nations uh, uh, personnel in Nigeria to whom the statement is attributed to, uh, they have not said anything really new. Uh, I recall at the inauguration of the election tribunal panel, the president of the Court of Appeal did uh, give an admonition on the need for the selected uh, judges to act true to their oath, to be fair minded, and not to be swayed by other considerations. 
we also have to remember that the judges are sworn on oath that could do good to all manner of men, irrespective of uh, whose ox is uh, God. So one way, one, one only hope and pray that uh, the, the judges will act true to their oath of office and dispense uh, justice according to the facts of days before them and the law and not uh, allow uh, themselves to be swayed by other considerations, uh, namely uh, ethno-religious uh, consideration or to fall under the undue pressure of uh, politicians. You recall some time ago when the uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria you know, had to uh, more or less uh, uh, no, he shouted to the Nigerian public, calling on politicians, stop putting pressure, undue pressure on the judiciary. The main problem we have are the politicians, the partitioners, uh, amended electoral act 2022, and the constitution, and all other laws are very clear and simple. But the politicians will refuse the electoral act. They will refuse to do the right thing. There's no internal democracy among the parties. The, the political parties will come up with uh, guidelines. The guidelines are there themselves formulated. The political class will not abide by it. When they recklessly breach provisions of their guidelines and the law, they now begin to put pressure on the judges. That is where you begin to hear of cases of some person, personnel in the judiciary being corrupted. So, I think the right quarters to which a statement and admonition to be directed at are the politicians, the political class. Okay. They are the ones who recklessly, with impunity, disobeys and flouts extra provisions of the Electoral Act, the Constitution, um, and all what not. Um, we are, we're a little bit confused us, here, Barisa. We're a little bit confused. We're a little bit confused. It's, you know, yeah. it's like putting a law in the Constitution yeah. that if you thief, if you steal something, you go to prison. And the courts will yes. be the ones to send you to prison. And the thieves yes. are stealing. And then yes. the families of the thieves or the thieves themselves are putting pressure on the legal or judiciary uh, to make sure that they don't go to prison. Mm -hmm. And then you are saying that we should not direct um, the need to abide by the laws to the thieves. Instead of the institution that has been put in place to make sure these thieves get what they need to get for breaking the law. I don't know how I will take my complaint to the politicians who will always put pressure to make sure it favors them when I have a body that should make sure these politicians pay for the wrongs they do. There's a electoral act. It's not for the politicians to interpret. It's for the, for the judiciary, for the legal luminaries like you guys to interpret and send them to jail if they have to go to jail. Why do we have to take it to the politicians again? Because it favors them they will not do anything about it. So our question is, why is it seeming like the judiciary is a bulldog without his teeth? What are the constraints that need to be removed for the judiciary to function the way it should function? That's our question, simply. Well, now you're, you've raised a number of uh, issues. Let me start with uh, the last step of uh, Actually, like my learned friend, uh, Justice, uh, said, the first thing to do is uh, to have a complete independence of the judiciary in terms of uh, certain financial autonomy. You recall a couple of years ago, there was a strike action embarked upon by judiciary workers on the basis of financial autonomy of the judiciary. Question where the chief judges of the various states and of the federal high court and even the chief judges of Nigeria 
you have to go uh, uh, cap in hand begging the executive to provide funds for the administration of the uh, justice system leaves much to be desired. It exposes them to a possibility of placed in a position to be manipulated or controlled. Whereas, if the judiciary had to draw their funds directly from the consolidated revenue fund without reference from, from the executive, then their independence will be more or less guaranteed and enhanced. Secondly, the mode of appointment sense to the judiciary is still work in progress. You will find out by and large, starting from the magistracy up to the highest uh, level, from time to time, questions are asked as to the quality and the capacity of personnel appointed as a judge. It's still work in progress, and I know that the NJC, they keep on reviewing the rules regarding the qualifications and the character content expected and required of persons aspiring to the position uh, of uh, judges. And then thirdly, you have to bear in mind that the judiciary cannot divorce itself from the society that we live in. By and large, you, you find that there has been a, a gradual descent into more or less, if I could use the word, ignominy in all facets of Nigerian life. The executive, the legislature, even members of the society. Morality is gradually waning. Impunity, lawlessness, might is right. Arrant and arrogant display of power. Ethnicity, religious bias. He's my brother, he's my sister. All these factors become in play. Nigerian judges, judges are human beings. They don't live in the moon. They live with us here. They pass through and all the vagaries, all the ease and norms, and it's, it's from within the society that you recruit the personnel. So it will be nearly impossible for you to expect that judges behave like Jesus Christ <laughs> or will be super human superhuman beings. They are not from the moon. They were selected from about us. So, by and large, the negative aspect that you see manifest in themselves in the judiciary is a reflection and manifestation of the type of society that we live in. Okay, Justice. Uh, sorry, uh, Barrister, if I, if I just quickly uh, come in here, and thanks for your perspectives. Yes. Uh, you made yes. a very interesting point, which has to do yes. with... Uh, the character, and actually Barrister Justice also said something similar, the character, uh, integrity, competence of, those who are, of some of those who are appointed uh, onto the bench. But there is, there is also the submission by some observers that very competent persons, legal practitioners, who have distinguished themselves when being offered the opportunity to become judges or justices, they don't want to accept it. They would rather prefer to continue their practice. They don't want to go onto the bench. Don't you think that if competent people, I mean, your colleagues, you who practice you know, uh, the, in the legal profession, if you, turn out, if you turn down opportunities to go and sit on the bench, we are not going to solve this problem. Yes, you are correct. Absolutely, I agree with you. But unless you improve the conditions of service of judges, and uh, they are assured of independence, freedom in the discharge of their judicial.
function. More and more qualified persons will not continue to decline in patient to the bench. You cannot have. Why would you want to leave your lucrative practice and now go to the judiciary? And it becomes life becomes difficult for you. Don't forget, these are human beings. They have personal needs. They have children. They must go to school. How do you pay their children's school fees? What happens to them after retirement? So that is why is it is essential that the conditions of work of judges all over the country to be improved tremendously. Okay. When they are more or less insulated from the normal vagaries that afflicts other members of Nigerian society, then the temptation to be sucked into to pervert justice because of some peculiar consideration will be removed. You cannot expect to appoint a judge and he does not have a house to stay. He does not have a car that will take him to work. He has to worry about fueling his generator. He does not have access to proper law library. He has to rely on his personal own efforts. I must commend uh, some states in the aspect of uh, welfare of judges, states like Lagos. So what I would recommend is that the NJC, working with the in conjunction with the federal government, they should look into the question of uh, the welfare of judges. Okay, um, Barrister, uh, let's, let's just move very fast now because of uh, time. Well, it, it appears that um, uh, no matter how we do it, no matter where we go, there must always be someone who we are begging to, play, to pay the piper, and he who pays the piper dictates the tune. Something needs to be done by the, the legal practitioners themselves to make sure this autonomy really comes. Because if you keep asking the state governments or the federal government to do something about the welfare, in fact, they're listening right now, which means, like people have said, poverty has been weaponized so that you get the people to do your bidding once you know that they are hungry enough. May that not be what is happening in the legal profession and the judiciary. But right now, we are, we are concerned about the um, elections. The forthcoming elections, 24 days left now, because today is the first. We have just 24 or 23 days to prepare for it. And on the 25th, we're having our presidential election. Now, let me come to you, uh, Justice Ohoibu. If we take the Oshun Oshun scenario, for instance, do we even have hope for uh, the 2023 election as it is? Because we've seen the judgment in Oshun, um, some of us still do not understand what happened there. We would like to have your take on that. You mentioned earlier on what happened in Imo State. Till today, it's a legal abracadabra. I do not understand how it happened. Where <laughs> someone from the third Abi fourth position became the governor, we don't understand. So let's just take your let's your, let's get your take on what happened uh, in the judgment regarding the Oshun election, where um, <clears throat> Ademola Adeleke was uh, was okay. Oyetola was pronounced as uh, the winner. <clears throat> Give us your take on that briefly, so that we can also take from uh, Osara. <laughs> You know why I'm laughing is because, uh, first of all, as lawyers, I, I overheard when we were discussing it with your colleague in, um, in the studio there. Uh, for now, we may not be able to discuss fully about it because the matter is still in court. But yeah. I know this man has approached uh, uh, the, the Court of Appeal for, uh, for that. Is, and that's why in the wisdom of the judicial system, we have three layers. The first one, the second one, and the third floor 
which is after that you cannot appeal to God. But truly speaking, every Nigerian was surprised with that judgment, just like what happened in Nigeria, in Imo State. And that was why I made the comment. That was why I said, you see, that you don't truncate the hopes and the lives of the people. And secondly, remember I say that most times, even when we read, we read in the laws, even when we were in law school and all the rest, especially in a lot of thoughts and all the rest, you see that judgments at times can be given for stability of the society. For stability of the society. So, this is what has happened in our show. I am so I am so optimistic that by the time they get to the Court of Appeal, any abnormality will be corrected or might be corrected. But the truth is this, you see, when you leave some of these things, just like we have been saying, to the hands of people that just try to be in the bench by all means. I'm sorry to say, but I have to say this. Today, I am also saying, like when my learned friends say to politicians, I, will, I can't blame it on politicians. Because if, if, if you have this, if you have single yourself out to become an adjudicator, whether a magistrate, whether a judge or whatever, provided you are an adjudicator, you must distinguish yourself. You are to live above board. You are not to seem to behave like others. You are not to seem to reason like an ordinary Nigerian because you are not a separate person. The lives of many are in your hands. Whether the issue of finance or not becomes immaterial because for you, that what you, you, you know, when you know of a risk and you decided to take the risk, there's nobody in Nigeria today that does not know that the financial stability of the charity is not that palatable. But once you have accepted to take it, you must. That is voluntary non fit injury. And when you know the risk and you decided to take the risk, you cannot rely on the fact that because that the charity is not being well taken care of, you now want to go there and mess yourself up. No. And that is where the issue of credibility, integrity, and your person begins to stand. I asked to put that JSC late when he was alive. So I asked him, what is the difference between a judge and a lawyer? He, so he answered me. He said that a judge is somebody who, after long standing in the bar, is called to sit in the bench. I still remember what he told me to today. He said, after long standing in the bar, he's called to sit in the bench. For you to be called to sit in the bench, which means there is something that will have been seen about you that you must distinguish you. What I'm trying to say now, if you look at what the Oshun uh, uh, Tribunal and all the rest, like you said, if you read that judgment very well, you might discover or figure so many th things. Uh, but it's not an issue we'll discuss here because this is not the best for us to discuss such matter. We are still watching and we are still waiting. I will still want to know what will happen. Okay, maybe you have. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, just one more question for um, uh, Osara. the uh, uh, barrister Osara. Um, it does appear as if the electoral process in Nigeria depends significantly on our judiciary. Some people have raised this issue and they have said that, the, of, of course, it is expected that if there's dispute or, or whatever in an electoral matter, it naturally should go to court. But that it, it, in our own case, it's like the courts have become like INEC. They have actually become an integral part of the, of the electoral process itself, you know, and, and that this is not healthy. Is there something that can be done to diminish? I know, first of all, that most of our politicians will not accept defeat. Mm -hmm. So willy-nilly, they will always go to court. But other than that, is there something that can be done to actually make sure that the, the judiciary is not that much engaged or involved in our electoral process? I uh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you have to uh, take into consideration the fact that uh, the, when there's a conflict, disagreement in the consequent people, best way to approach to. That's why, under the plan of section six, six, the court judiciary said, advocate on dispute between individuals, between persons and government. Wherever, and it's a fact of life that uh, it is normal. Uh, okay, I would respect your electoral 
issues, a forum to go to, is a judiciary. It's a judiciary. So, uh, and then, I still make this appeal. The way, the only way that we can reduce the uh, the intervention of the judiciary in the electoral process is that if the actors, political actors, if they learn to play by the rules, they learn to play by the rules. The provisions of the electoral act to 2022, they are very clear, very simple. All the political parties, they have legal departments, they have uh, legal advisors, they are all uh, educated, they can read the constitution, they have their guidelines and provisions. But it's just that the, the tussle for power and control of power is such that politicians they are ready to do anything just so as to grab power. So the deliberation flouts their own rules, flouts provisions of the electoral act, and the only recourse is to go to court for resolution. And by and large, if you take a, a look at the performance of the judiciary from uh, 1999 up to date, you can say fairly that the judiciary has discharged itself relatively well. This, this is in spite of the reservation that most of us have regarding the Oshun result, and including that of uh, Akpabio, the recent judgment of the Supreme Court in uh, the Akpabio senatorial ambition. Because uh, most of us, we are still trying to understand the rationale because we saw Akpabio contesting for presidential primary ticket of the APC, and we knew that the second DIG had already been selected as the senatorial candidate of uh, the party in Akwaibom State. And then the judge of the Supreme Court says that the political party have a sanitary affair of the political party. And we are wondering, we are waiting to read the details of that judgment so that we see the rationale. And now I understand that uh, Senate President Lawan is lining up to go to the Supreme Court. So, the ball, as far as I understand, the body is on the political actors. They should learn to play by the rule. I'm not for uh, restricting access to the, to the court by any of anybody. Whoever is aggrieved, who has a grievance, either be it in terms of electoral practices, or business relations or, or interpersonal affairs, the only place to go as prescribed under the provisions of Section 6 of our Constitution, you go to the courts. How much we can take. Uh, when we talk legal matters, especially we that do not really understand the legal angle to everything, <laughs> would like to dig and keep digging and keep digging. But we do hope that this 2023 uh, general elections will not bring as many cases as we've seen in the past. And even if they do, we do hope that the judgments will be speedy enough so that governance can start right away. We'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show, hoping that we are going to connect with you again, even before the general elections or immediately after. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It is my pleasure once more. Okay. Well, we'll take a short break now for the news. And when we come back from the news, we'll just take uh, uh, what the guests have said and some of the f each, uh, issues rather that are bedeviling us, if I may use the word, uh, in Nigeria right away. So don't go away. Stay with us.